If I say that the world is round and someone else says it's flat, that's worth reporting. But you might also want to report on a bunch of scientific evidence that seems to support the notion that the world is round. We're trying to move towards the future. They, they want to be stuck in the past. And we've heard this kind of thinking before. Let me tell you something. If some of these folks were around when Columbus set sail, They, 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 they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. Much patience for anyone who denies that this challenge is real. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. This is a quick follow-up video to my last one. A few of my subs made mention to a clip that I didn't see on CNN's website, where CNN just showed a portion of Hillary Clinton's speech, where she makes a reference to the glass ceiling, of course, a reference to the dome, God's firmament that is above us. This is how these Satanists love to mock, and all these people in this auditorium just cheer and have no idea that she's mocking them. Take a listen. Again, this is how they love to mock. And it may be hard to see tonight, but we are all standing under a glass ceiling right now. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning of the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. Okay, people, my name is Dana. This is my very first YouTube video ever. Um, I've got something here that I don't quite understand, and I'm hoping maybe someone out there can explain it to me. I've been doing a lot of research on um, the flat earth and the firmament. Uh, things like that. This is um, a set of encyclopedias I have. Um, they're Encyclopedia Americana. Um, this is volume two. It's the A's. What we're going to do is look at what it says about Antarctica. Um, these, just remember, this uh, this is a 1958 edition. Okay, this was before the Antarctic Treaty was signed. Um, this was before the supposed Apollo missions. Um, I want to show you something that it says in here about Antarctica. It basically talks about um, all the exploration. It says here, Antarctic region, regions, excuse me, um, all the exploration. Um, has a few, few photos, not too many. This is um, the map created back then. I've read all of this. This is the part here that I have the question about. I am trying my best to get some light on here really good. Um, like I said, this is my first video. Don't criticize me too much. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing. Let's see. Okay, I hope you can see this. They did flights, and it says, These flights prove the inland areas to be featureless in character with a dome 13,000 feet high at about latitude 80 degrees south, longitude 90 degrees east. Okay, I have no idea what that means. There seems to be only one definition for the word dome. Um, anyway, if uh, anybody has any idea what this means, can explain this to me, I would appreciate it. Okay, thanks.
Hello Slaves of the World, for the past two years, a seemingly crazy group of people called, Flat Earthers, have been growing in large quantities, I assure you, that there is a reason for this. If the Flat Earth theory did not have any merit, it would not have lasted more than a month, on the web. Now, evidence for the flat and motionless Earth seems to pop up every day, along with more people waking up to the facts, and not the pseudoscience that we've all been force-fed our whole lives. The issue is that 90% of Earth's population or more are still in a deep slumber, and refuse to do any thinking for themselves. They'd rather kneel down to whatever self-proclaimed authority is in place and blindly follow them into intentional misunderstanding and ignorance. Everything you think you know about the universe is a lie. Fantastic theories passed off as factual information. Gravity is nothing more than a scapegoat. To explain why you're able to travel hundreds of thousands of miles per hour on a spinning ball without falling off. The funny thing is that motion has never once been detected in all the time that we've been here on Earth. Curvature has not been measured either. NASA receives billions of tax dollars each year, and all they have to show for it is composite images that look like cartoons. The six lunar landings that were purported to have taken place between 1969 and 1972 were intended to reinforce the belief of living on a spinning ball. Now, in 2016, most people have been so dumbed down that even though there is zero proof for a globe Earth, they still happily accept the lie, and relentlessly attack anyone who says different. The reality of the matter is that, we cannot leave the Earth because we are enclosed by the firmament. The implications of this are astounding to say the least. A nearly one-sided spiritual battle, is being waged against a clueless general public, that has been taught that Earth, and all life, is the result of a cosmic accident that led to humans evolving, from ape-like creatures, over millions of years. The reason that they want us to think these nonsensical ideas, is because the total opposite is what is actually true. We are of divine origin and have a basis for being here. Unfortunately, many people are heavily under the influence of the mainstream media, and will forever be suffering from cognitive dissonance. If that isn't the case, then the Tavistock Institute has successfully trained them not to care, through music, movies and TV shows. The thoughts that you think are your own, are manufactured for you. Your opinions are formed by psychos with an agenda to enslave humanity, and put a stranglehold on the world, as a whole. Pay attention and wake up to the Flat Earth conspiracy today, and watch as their power over you, becomes, dust in the wind. You looked around at this flat, beautiful land, and all this sun, I just, I, I, I asked the question, how, how many days of sun do you get a year? 320, that's pretty good and decided that Boulder City was the perfect place to generate solar power. In fact, uh, as I was talking to uh, the folks from Semper, they were explaining that uh, this location is almost optimal for uh, solar power generation. And not only because it's flat, transmission lines were already here, the sun is traveling and it, it's, there's no haze and it's absolutely clear and so uh, this is an extraordinary opportunity uh, for the community. The sun is traveling and it, it's the sun is traveling and it, it the sun is traveling and it, it's the sun is traveling and it, it's